Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Steel Here podcast, where I'm your host, Kevin Adams, alongside my partner in crime, Jersey Jerry. And Jerry, finally, finally, it's a fun week to be a Steelers yes. fan. We got a big win, baby. Big win, yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, a lot of Steelers fans will probably agree with me on this. Uh, I know you will. Did not expect a win. No. I did Really did not expect a win. But I'll tell you what, it makes it so much fucking sweeter beating Tom Brady. It really, really does. Oh, yeah. And f- for the first time this year, besides that first game of the year, we got to the quarterback. Yep. And we put pressure. So, like, it, like you said earlier in the year, when you do that, it disguises, you know, the weaknesses of your secondary. And we yep. had a bunch of, you know, guys back there that not a lot of people know of. And they stepped up to the plate. But the main thing is... We got pressure on the quarterback. And Jerry, the I think the the most exciting part of getting pressure of the quarterback was that we didn't even really we didn't even send blitzes. Like I I, no, I read a stat that I'm not sure that we not blitz more. Blitz. Yeah, exactly. Not I don't think one. we blitz once. And so <laughs> to get that much pressure with four and five man rushes, that is fucking huge. And hats off. I mean Last week, Jerry, we rode his ass into the dirt. We rode his ass into the dirt. And it's starting to be a common trend on this show. We ride a guy into the fucking ground. And what's he do? He turns around and has a, a banner week the following week. We, yep. If we take him he out of the fucking... Up. Right. And so for Mike Tomlin, for Mike Tomlin, we ate his ass alive. And and that's that's why people love Mike Tomlin. That's why Mike Tomlin gets defended. That's why he gets high praise from, from ex-players. We had no business winning that game. No business. No. We didn't have a single starter in the secondary as cornerbacks, and and you were looking at backup safeties. I mean, we were beat up across the board, and we also lose to Marvin Leal. I mean, we were wounded. So to beat Tom Brady and salvage where we're at in the season, it's not dead yet, Jerry. We're still no, not alive. Dead. Not dead yet, man. We got two important games coming up. I'm really, really excited, excited uh, for uh, Miami Sunday night. That's going to be electric. Oh, yeah. But I'll tell you what. Man, he, he, you know, Mitch came in there. He did his thing, man. He did his mm-hmm. thing. Kenny, you know, he completed completed a bunch of passes. Completion percentage was good like it always is. Uh, Didn't really get the yards. Struggled a little bit. Got banged up. Got hurt. Went to the locker room. Mitch came in. First series, not that good. But after that, I'll tell you what, he stepped up, man. He did. Mm-hmm. So hats off to him and hats off to Chase Claypool. They both stepped up big time. Oh yeah, I mean, for 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 Mike Tomlin to win that football game with, you know, Kenny, like you said, he looked good early. That first drive, we moved the ball really efficiently. Yes, marched it right down the field. That's our first touchdown in the opening drive in a long time. I want to say dating back to like the Packers game last year in at Lambeau when Deontay Johnson had a, a deep one down the right sideline. But mm-hmm. we haven't really come out of the gates and and lit teams up early, and we had to. I mean. When, when that first half was going the way that it was going, the Steelers' defense was standing on its head, and we scored on the opening drive. And then yet again, though, the one thing that has not gotten praise, no matter how much we fucking ride it into the ground, Matt Canada still sucks. His play call yeah. is still so, so fucking bad, man. It's terrible. Yeah. O- opening drive, you should score. Like, that's every, that's every offensive coordinator's bread and butter. That's your best plays. That's everything your quarterback is comfortable with. That's when you should be scoring. And we did. And it felt fucking great. But from then, he just tucked his tail again. I mean, we yeah. didn't throw, if you looked at Kenny's passing chart, he didn't throw beyond beyond four yards down the field like more, I want to say two times in the entire first half until he got hurt with eight minutes left. That's still bad play calling. We're still yeah, not yeah. using the middle of the field. That's still a major issue. But of all of those things said, for the Pittsburgh Steelers to get this win on Sunday, vintage Mike Tomlin. And I, I'm not going to take my foot off the gas of riding him just yet because I would like to stack some of these things in a row, but a game like that buy it buys him some time in my mind. It's very hard to win in this league. It's especially hard to beat Tom Brady, and it, it is monumentally difficult to beat him when you don't have a single starter in your secondary. It, it is yeah. wild, man. That is as wild. tough as as tough as their defense is too. 
You know what I mean? I know they were missing one or two starters on D, mm -hmm. but I mean that's a tough defense, man. Oh, it's yeah. very hard to score on that defense. And we came, we came, drove down the field, we scored points. Um, I'll tell you what, during the game, this is when I thought the Steelers would collapse that game. This is when I this is when I put my hands on my head and I said, fuck, it's over. Is when Sims returns that yeah. all the way down into the red zone. <laughs> to the right? 10. To the fucking yeah. 10. Yeah, and 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 we come up with three points. That's when I said to myself, "Well, it it was a good game while it lasted because this motherfucker's over now. This is what Tom Brady does." And I'll tell you what, I was super surprised at the outcome, and I'm so happy we won. I mean, it, it, it's it's that is still why Mac Inner will not get any praise, and he doesn't fucking deserve praise. You you have all the momentum. You're at home with all the momentum, and you you are staring at a kick return that takes you to the ten yard line. And it, one of the like one of the very next plays that were run after that, I want to say the second down play. It was a broken fucking play. Two weeks yeah. in a row in the red zone, the, the 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 offense is not all on the same page. Receivers are running the wrong routes. The play was broken down. Kenny had to pitch it way out of bounds over the right the right hash that's still that's still fucking matt canada not having the guys where they're supposed to be not having them running the right routes or just running dog shit routes because the play calls suck i mean that's still gonna be a fucking problem for us e even still even still having said all that the special teams came through for us that was not that was that sims return was not the first one of the game where he it looked like he was gonna break it off i mean he had one or two other ones where it looked like house yeah. calls that guy yeah. looks like ab in the open field as, as crazy as that is to say he looks that's the last time we've had anything that looked even remotely close to that yeah now i got a question for you um when austin comes back mm -hmm. could you see him in a role like that let's say sims down the line um whatever muffs a pun or something like that like we've seen gunner could you see austin filling that role i mean he's he's got the wheels and he and he has great wee -oo, hands. Wee -oo, wee -oo. we he got we got breaking news we got breaking news oh god let's hear it our friend kenneth pickett at some point this season, will be coming on the steel here podcast let's go confirmed. let's confirmed. go he just hit you just hit me right now. Confirm. Oh, let's fucking go, Jer. That is a big get. Finally, finally, we know we know that we have uh, we know that we have Fryermuth coming during the bye week. So Pat Pat wanted to come on early in the season for for people that don't know. Uh, Pat wanted to come on early, and the problem was that he does chalk talk with the Steelers on uh, I want to say Wednesday nights with uh, I think it's Craig Wolfley. So he can't do it. He can't do uh, he can't do regular season podcasts. It has to be the bye week. So we do have Fryermuth lined up for the bye. Add in Kenny now. This is about to get exciting, especially if we can yes. stack some wins, Jerry. And yeah. that comes back to this game Sunday night in Miami, where you and I will both be Jerry Don. Yes, yes, it's gonna be really, really excited. Um, you know, this is this is my first time going to a tailgate of yours um, away. So mm -hmm. really looking forward to it. We yep. got some special guests there. Kevin knows when I come to Pittsburgh, I sit front row. So <laughs> yeah. I had to bully Kevin into buying some front row tickets for us. Listen, uh, let's call a spade a spade. Yeah. You know, Ke Kevin's, a, Kevin's, um, you know, more well off than me. So, so <laughs> Kevin, that's the rule now. If Kevin wants me at a weight game. He's buying. I'm flying. <laughs> All right. So, so Jerry and I early in the week, we start talking about, we haven't gotten tickets yet. Like I'm more of a wait, wait and see kind of guy. Like I don't, at home Steelers games, people ask this, they tweet me this all the time. Like, why, why are your seats in the upper level? And it's because I prefer to sit up there. Like I have five seats in a row. I, I genuinely could sit anywhere I want. Not not being arrogant, I could I could sit other places. I prefer to sit up there because I like to see the plays open up. I like to see the plays open. I can see things better from up there than I can at the lower level. So Jerry and I did that Lions preseason game front row. That shit is addicting. It is addicting. It's so he addicting. twists my arm right into first row in Miami. <laughs> and I mean, Jesus, they they I'm, I had to trade some stocks all week just to cover that tab, Jerry Dom. But yeah. it's gonna be a hell of well, a day you know jj's front row guy <laughs> i mean i mean i mean big ben you know listen the last i think four times i've been to pittsburgh it's been front row mm -hmm. i just i just i i would like to sit somewhere else for from my for my bank account to be <laughs> to be a little bit better but i say to myself like it's like flying first class and 
this is for a lot of people. They say once you fly first class, it's hard to not fly first class. For me, my first experience at a Steelers game uh, that I sat front row, it's so hard to stop doing that. <laughs> once you get that feel, you're like you're right there. The players are like right here, and it's like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I love it. It's gonna be a blast. We have fill passes, so you guys are you guys are gonna see us pump out some good some good stuff this weekend. The tailgate, uh, we've sold over five hundred tickets already, so that tailgate is gonna be an absolute banger. It is gonna be a banger. You can find if you guys are gonna be at the game. If you're listening to this and you want to stop by the tailgate, we're gonna have Yancey Thigpen, Ernie Mills, Jerry's gonna be there. Uh, some other guys that. I probably shouldn't tell you, but fuck it. We're, we're riding with it. So Pouncy is, is going to stop by. Uh, and Saturday night, Jerry and I are going to an event for the Pounceys. They're opening a distillery in Miami. We're going to check that out. So that's going to be uh, Mike and Marquise, uh, Villanueva, and Dave DeCastro. So that's going to be a great night Saturday night. And, and I'm thinking we're going to get some of those guys to the tailgate on Sunday. So if you guys want to check that out, you're more than welcome to stop by. It's going to be a fucking blast. For sure. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, for the tickets wise, I will say this: shame on, shame on Hard Rock Stadium, shame on the Dolphins. Oh yeah, the way they have their their setup is so fucking stupid and ridiculous. Like we we we're sitting first row, we're sitting first row, um, on the tunnel, right? Corner end zone, right where the Steelers come out. That's like the only spot where there's no barrier. So like section one fifteen, one sixteen, Steelers sideline, um. If we were to sit front row there, there's this like other barrier like 15 feet away. I don't know what the hell they got going on there, press or whatever, but it's just so fucking stupid. Yeah, it's dumb. So it's gated off. So technically, if you're front row, if you buy those row one seats, uh, most of both sidelines, is it has this metal fencing that goes out that I'm assuming they stuff people down in there. And so yeah. you're not really like the players really can't get to you. You can't really talk to anyone at that point. So, yeah, you're front row, but you're really not. So the seats that we ended up uh, ended up robbing a bank to get uh are in the corner right where the Steelers come out so you guys are gonna you guys are gonna see us it's gonna be a bl absolute blast I can't wait to do that man I genuinely can it's gonna be a great Sunday and if we win Jerry if we win this game on Sunday which I'm I am high on I really think we have a chance to do it. we're gonna get healthy again on the defensive side of the ball I mean I actually think there's a chance that they do activate uh Austin I mean if we can if we can go into Miami, Tua's coming back. He'll probably be a little skittish. It's hard to take two shots like he took and not be skittish. The yeah. defense should be ripping. If we can get a win and get this fucking thing to three and four, go into Philadelphia where the Eagles are damn good, so that's a tall task. But if we can get yeah. this thing to three and four, go into Philly, and then the bye week after this season has legs, guys. And I didn't fucking think we would say this last week because I honestly thought that the, the Bucks would smoke us. How could you not? So if yeah. we can win this fucking game on Sunday, we're so back, Jerry. We're so what, back. And the division is weak. It's really Terrible. not that good. Terrible. I mean, I mean, Ravens, you know what I mean? They look, they look good. I mean, they just lost to the, uh, to the, to the G men, mm -hmm. but I mean, you know, the Bengals aren't as strong as they were towards the end of last year. The Browns, they don't really look great at mm -hmm. all. I mean, they run the ball good, but you know, Brissett's having a hard time getting going. The defense isn't good. Miles Garrett is, is not playing good football this year. Pedestrian, pedestrian. Yeah. And it's wild whenever people try and suggest in any capacity that Miles Garrett is comparable to TJ Watt or Aaron Donald because yeah. he's simply not. He is not. No. I mean, this guy goes and he never pedestrian does shit for long stretches. Either. Yeah, never, like, never. When we match up against him, he doesn't do a fucking thing, bro. Mm -hmm. No, no, he's pretty much useless, and that's and that's saying something because Dan Moore Jr. is the guy that blocks him. So that's that's the funniest part about that. I mean, the, what it's going to take to win on Sunday is we're going to have to score some points. So Tomlin came out today and said that Kenny is uh, Kenny is in concussion protocol, but he doesn't have a concussion. So he's moving through it fast. He's not going to be restricted at practice. He can fully practice, which means on Sunday night, you're going to get to see Kenny Pickett. I mean, I'll be absolutely fucking shocked if Kenny Pickett does not start Same Sunday here. night. And I'll be, and I'll tell you what, I was very, this is the first time that I've seen Tomlin make a decision before the media even has, even can ask him a fucking question. I, he shut it down fast. He shut it down so fast. Kenny will be the starter if he's clear to play. Like, boom, that's it. Yep. So all the reporters, they got their answer right away because the first question was going to be who's playing quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday. Right. 
Right. And and then so Jerry and I, you and I had discussed this. We didn't want to see a quarterback carousel happen. We were worried. We were worried. So before the news comes out today, Jerry and I had had a few conversations where it didn't really look like a fucking concussion. Anyone that watched that, it didn't look like a concussion. It looked like a shot to the ribs. You know, maybe it knocked the wind out of him. It didn't look like he was concussed. So for him to leave the game, the shitty part about the concussion protocol is if you're in it for having concussion symptoms or anything tied to it, that's about a week. I mean, you're not yeah. getting out of it. So you're probably missing the game. So our fear was, what if he misses the game and we beat we beat Miami and then he doesn't play then uh, because it's how's Tomlin going to go back to back to him if Trubisky comes out and plays great against the Dolphins, which I'm, I wouldn't be upset about. My fear was that it would be quarterback carousel. And the fact that Tomlin stepped right on the throat of that today yeah. and shut it down immediately does two things. It sends a message to Kenny Pickett. You're our fucking guy. You yeah. are our guy, and we're not backing down from this. You, this is what we're riding now, baby. And it also sends a message to the team. He, he, he said, he answered, he followed up with his answer. He didn't want there to be, you know, he wants the guys to know who to rally around. He wants them yeah. to know who to rally around. And I think that's, that's, God damn it, I hate that we were so hard on him last week because sometimes he does things where it makes him a great coach. And that's why I ripped my fucking hair out because I don't think Mike Tomlin is a terrible coach. I don't. I think he has terrible fucking coordinators. <laughs> that's the bottom line of it. Yeah, great, great yeah, coaches good. win on Sunday like they did. Oh, for sure, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's the thing I was saying to myself too, because as you alluded to uh, last week, you know, when we were on the phone just chatting it up, um, you know, the schedule gets weaker after the bye. Mm-hmm. So what happens if Kenny didn't play, and then Mitch comes in, beats the Dolphins? Let's say we lose to the Eagles, and you know, rifles off a couple wins in a row down the stretch. You know, it's kind of fucking with with Kenny's confidence. You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of fucking with the locker room. And let's let's call a spade a spade here. Uh, Deontay Johnson, I think he hates Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> he does he not like Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> he <laughs> does not fucking like him. I'm gonna have for anyone that doesn't have Twitter, and you might miss some of this stuff if you're if you're not really on Twitter. Uh, yesterday, Deontay Johnson had had come out and and pretty much shown a, a pretty high amount of respect to uh to Kenny Pickett and this comes a day after we're starting to hear these things that that Mitch and Deontay Johnson have had some blowback in the locker room they were in each other's faces yelling there was you know dissension be- between Mitch and and uh, Deontay Johnson and ultimately what we're being told by Jerry Dulac is that that is why Mitch Trubisky was benched in the second half of that Jets game now do I believe that I, I think maybe they argued. Absolutely. They probably had a disagreement. Do I think I that's think why he was benched? No. no, that's not why he was fucking benched. He just no. he wasn't playing good football. I mean, I call a spade a spade on that end. But I, that and that goes to show, circling back to your point, the guys, it looks like they rally more around Kenny than they do Mitch. And and this yeah. is this is things they've said all season. They they it yeah. looks like they just care more about playing with Kenny than they do with I'm Mitch. I'm just I'm just waiting to see. Now listen. Kenny threw for a lot of yards against the Bills, but we got blown out in that game. You know, towards the end of the game, Bills are letting up big big plays. They don't really care much. I want to see Kenny, and I hope it is this week. And if it's not this week, it's going to be very hard to do it next week. I want to see that glimpse of super consistency, which he always is, you know, completion percentage-wise usually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I want to see like a – like a two or three touchdown performance, two fifty touchdowns. Yeah, two hundred and fifty, two hundred seventy five yards, two touchdowns. You know what I mean? I want to see that, and you know, I- I'm just hoping it could be this week if he plays, just to get that spark on. Like, okay, we can push the ball down the field. Yes, we can throw touchdown passes to our ride- wide receivers. Right. I mean, uh, uh, to Mitch's defense, we have two wins this season. Uh, we have two wins, and Mitch quarterbacked them, kind of both. I mean, Kenny played well. Kenny scored 10 points in the first half. He played well out of the gates. Some of the coaching sucked, like we said, through the middle. He didn't play. He didn't play great. Let, let's keep it all the way 100. He didn't play. You know, I didn't think he was fucking Hall of Fame worthy after that game, but he didn't He didn't kill us either. Mitch didn't didn't kill us. Mitch won the game, you know, with his legs late and and finding finding Chase Claypool. Jerry, Chase Claypool, we've ridden that fucking guy into the dirt on this show too, and he – showed out he i I tweeted he let his fucking nuts hang because that's what it takes that guy is a that he's an alpha he's built like a total fucking monster and finally he's starting to impose his will a little bit it's nice to see it jerry yeah kev i mean i mean listen claypool stepped up big time for sure you know um showed flashes of that rookie year um Mm -hmm. had a bunch of catches cut a bunch of big catches too i'll tell you what one one of those last catches 
when Mitch caught him back shoulder. That was a great catch, man. Beautiful. That was unbelievable. That is an NFL play, and that and for that reason, that is my all heart player of the week. It, it, it and it is it is Chase Claypool because Chase he balled and it wasn't just, he, he went seven for seven. I mean, anytime you see a receiver over four or five and they catch them all, that's a good fucking stat line. And he caught all seven of the balls that went to him. That's, that's special from, from two different quarterbacks, seven for seven, 96 with the game winning touchdown, one rush for eight yards. That alone is worthy of all heart player, especially when we've ridden his ass for quite a while, but it was, he did some things that Chase Claypool doesn't get a lot of respect for. And he was a good blocker in college at Notre Dame. He was a very good blocker in college and he hasn't been that great this season blocking. You know, he looks a little timid. He blocked his ass off on the outside. There's one play where, where Najee gets a, a pitch to the outside right side. And you have, you have Chase Claypool just bullying the fucking guy on the edge. And, and to me, that again, it always circles back. That's all hard stuff for me. That's what it takes. It's that extra little bit you have to fucking give if you want to win. And when you add that on top of seven for seven, 96 yards and a touchdown, that's a great fucking day. Tip of the hat to, to Chase Claypool. I mean, if he can turn that around, our season also is going to start turning around if you can get some production out of that guy. Yeah, for sure. Um, great game by Chase. Um, my all hard player of the week is, you know, it's kind of a reoccurring theme, I guess. We know we're tough on a guy and he steps up. Mine would be pretty much, I think, it's play of the game. Uh, And that's Devin Bush making that stop, man, for that two-point conversion. I mean, the way that if you watch the play, he was initially on the tight end, and Mm -hmm. then he had to hop off the tight end to then cover, I think it was Godwin. So Mm -hmm. his reaction to that was incredible. And then, you know, leans over, deflects the pass, boom, not successful. Um, that That was a huge play. And for him... To like have that in his head, like he was on the tight end, and I said to myself, watching him play, this guy coming across the middle. I didn't know who it was at the time, but he was he was going to be wide open, wide ass and, open, and he had the knowledge like I got to get to this guy because that's where he's going to go. Slipped right off the tight end because he had help, went and covered him. Boom! I'll tell you what, man, that's a that's a big time football play from Devin Bush. Mm-hmm. That that pretty much, if if the Bucks got that two point conversion. I I would be super super scared. We probably uh, lose. Because, we probably yeah, lose. that momentum would have shifted. Yeah. The defense would have been down. You know, the offense would have been like, "Fuck, what the?" You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that was a huge play for us. That's my all heart player of the week, Devin Bush, man. Devin Bush ball, Jerry. He balled, and and Devin Bush has slowly been coming on a little bit more these last couple of weeks. And yes, he has. and did he look timid early? Yes, he looked timid early in the season again. But he's he's starting to finally come on. And and a a, a runner up in my opinion, like this came down to it was either Chase Claypool or it was Miles Jack for me, Jerry. Miles Jack could be an honorable mention this week because what he did was also fun fucking special so he is another guy that stopped a touchdown from happening clay or uh there was a, a play early in the first half where he fucking climbs the ladder i mean he he's fucking yeah, it tips it right yeah. 12 feet in the air and he barely tips the ball so that the tight end can't catch it who was wide open the ball was right on the money that's a touchdown and he hurt his foot at some point in like the first quarter and gutted it out played the rest of the game you could see him hobbling around it's it's a gutty performance like that that you know you need to give whenever everyone else on your defense is beat up and he played out of his fucking mind too and i want to i want to tip the cap to brian flores because that's coaching man if devin bush can turn the corner if he can get it going and miles jack can continue to be what miles jack is we're really starting to we're starting to grow as a football team now maybe yes. we overreacted the first four weeks or, or what have you we we didn't look good but good coaching gets better through october you know yeah. at, everybody knows that through october and into november that's where coaching actually comes in and and the steelers historically have an incredible record in october yes and they do it's yes Mike, they do big Mike Tom. yeah Mike, for sure no doubt about it, man. And I'll tell you what, I think this is going to be, is this going to be Minka's first time back at Miami? Yeah. And he's coming back for as his first time back in Miami. I'll tell you what, they're, they're going to want to fucking win this football game more than, you know, some football games they might've played this year. This right. is going to be, I'm not saying this is a rivalry game, but this is kind of uh, like a get back game for two of those guys, man. And if yes. you don't think Brian, Brian Flores is pumping up this fucking defense to go out there and make some noise, you're crazy. 
I, I, I agree with you. And, and it's, I think the other thing we need to understand is what the Steelers did on Sunday and what I think they're going to have to do again on Sunday is have a great game plan because the Dolphins can score the ball and they have two absolutely fucking gas receivers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Jalen, Jalen Waddle has wheels, boy, and he can smoke our ass. And Tyreek Hill has given us fits every time we've ever played him. Yeah. So those two guys can create havoc for us through the secondary, and that's concerning. But Terrell Austin... Uh, tip of the cap to him he coached a great football game and it was guys like cam hayward and larry ogan joby that helped it massively you mentioned it jerry that the the we didn't have to rush the passer not one time blitz wise and we still had a ton of pressures and we got we got some sacks going a lot of that had to do with the interior defensive line play from larry ogan joby and cam hayward finally finally cam looks like cam i mean he yeah. last the first game this season he genuinely looked like cam hayward and ogan joby has been coming on strong for us the last couple of weeks so i'm starting to Drink the fucking Kool-Aid again. I mean, I, I'm i on, I'm off, I'm on, I'm off. I can't fucking figure it out because this team is so hot and cold, but we looked we looked like we could win some football games on Sunday, and that's exciting as hell. I, I can't help but be excited for it. Yeah, for sure. I think the key, you know, this week is, yes, we're going to have the score points, but, I, you know, two is not the, the, the most mobile guy out there. Mm-mm. And especially coming off this injury, man, who knows what, it's, what he's going to be like back there. I'm sure he's going to be shaky from the, from the jump, so... I think if the Steelers get to him early, we could rattle him. Yep. Um, and shout out to Alex Highsmith. I know you know he's leading the league in sacks. Yep. He's getting to the quarterback. Um, so shout out to him. But I think that's the recipe this week, man. We got to pressure Tua because we don't know what he's going to be like, you know, especially coming off an injury like that. I just hope they're able to do that. And, and, and this this is one of those games that sets up where a guy comes back after a brutal-looking concussion. And I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Any any athlete that takes takes a shot like that and two in the same – two in a five-day period of time, I mean, yeah. it's got to be in his mind the first time he goes back to play a football game knowing he's playing a team like the Steelers that do rush the passer pretty heavily. This sets up for one of those types of games where a, a Tua gets nervous, might even feel pressure that isn't there, forces a ball, so a guy like Minka fucking does a house call with it this is that type yeah. of scenario right here i would love to see that happen sunday oh yeah i would love would, would love 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 to see it. i'm so excited we're gonna both be there man i think what i want what i want to read is my tweet of the week is simply because it's it's by a guy named josh carney he writes for steelers depot uh he tweeted something and, and this kind of epitomizes where i'm at with mike tomlin so he said i never ever want to hear another word about mike tomlin's abilities after this one backed into a corner missing entire secondary against tom brady losing starting quarterback to a concussion ground out a massive win elite coach will be for a long long time y- yes i mean he, he's a he's a very good head coach he's a very good head coach you know and and games like that prove that he is a good head coach it does not mean that we can't criticize him though jerry it doesn't mean we yeah. can't criticize him because no. the guy deserves criticism for every for every one of these he has he has he has a couple of duds that that fucking follow it up so you know we lost to the jets let's not forget this we lost to the jets mike tomlin didn't you know we didn't look great we got browns. our fucking doors blown off we lost to the browns i mean we've you know we could have beat the patriots so you know we've lost some games but we lost them early and and to mike tomlin's defense like we said october is usually a great month so if mike tomlin can rattle this off and we can get to the bye week at four and four three and five i would even be okay with you know at least we're not dead because the division sucks but four and four and we're in the thick of it in the division jerry it's not dead yet baby it is not dead yet the second half gets easy jerry and you're gonna get to see kenny pickett find some confidence and reel off some wins and we could be watching exciting football through through the second half of the season here and it starts on sunday gotta get a win on sunday yeah we do my tweet of the week is actually kind of like a funny one uh, it's from uh, it's from Blitzburg, and I'll send it to you so we could have Nick clip it in there. Mm-hmm. What it is is it's Mitch Trubisky in a, in his in like a Versace suit with Giselle. <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. I mean, listen, I know Mitch family man, Tom Brady family man. Listen, it's fake picture, but it's just so funny. You know what I mean? I mean, there hasn't. Let me, I'm trying to think. How many, Ben has only beaten Tom Brady three times? Beat him his rookie year. Yeah, uh, beat him beat three him, or two. I want to say three years ago, we beat him whenever... Uh, Joe Hayden interception, right? Yes, yes, right sideline. And then mm-hmm. uh, 
I can't think of the other time we might have beaten them because it's so fucking hard to beat them. I, yeah, I know that yeah. I know that we beat them. I want to say in two thousand and eight um, or two thousand five. It was oh eight. It was oh eight. We beat them. Uh, that's whenever Ryan Clark absolutely fucking dumped Welker. But that yes. was that was Matt Castle was quarterbacking then. So that wasn't Tom Brady that Tom Brady, season. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I know twice. I can I can remember very vividly two times. And then Jesse James caught it. That should have been at least yeah, one. Yeah, I, I was at that game. That was fucking crazy. Bro. Terrible. That was fucking crazy. But um, we can get into the the bet of the week. We'll do it today. Yeah. Um, I'm taking I'm taking the Steelers this week, man. With the, with the seven points, I'm taking them with the seven points. I I really 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 think, you know, no bias. I think the Steelers can win this game but i'm gonna bet the seven points who knows what two is gonna look like Mm -hmm. um this could be the first game you'll see this offense maybe show a real real sign of life a serious sign of life and be super consistent agreed and i think Najee is coming off you know he said he took that metal plate out of his foot and that was the last thing that was stopping him from being 100 percent uh he looked a little bit better on sunday their run game is is very incrementally improving it's not terrible yeah. it's, very, it's not great by any standard but we're starting to do some things get the wide receivers involved which helps you know spread some things out it helps keep the run game kind of kind of established so we don't have to throw it you know 50 times a game like we did in yeah. buffalo uh to recap last week's betting I had the under 43 and a half. So I hit that bet. I had under 43 and a half. Jerry had the Buccaneers to cover eight. So Jerry lost uh, on the season. I am three and three. Jerry is two and four. So finally, someone has a lead in this. I am am three and three. Jerry is two and four. This week, I'm taking the the outright money line. I'm taking Steelers plus... Plus oh, the two, 240 juice. Yeah, I'm taking it because this is one of those ones where it I'll just fucking two, feels like it. I'll give you two wins for that. If you, if you, if they hit the money line, you get an extra win for that because you're taking it. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll take, I'll take the double wins. That could re Jerry. That could really extend yes, my lead here. I could be up three. I could be up three easy ones. I know. I know. We haven't even discussed what we're gonna do yet. We actually need to. We actually need to figure that out so that the so that the people know what we're playing for. But fuck, if I win that one, that's gonna be nice. Now there are some yeah, other bets you. that I strongly am, I I would look into. Another one that I would look into is is George Pickens over whatever the number of catches is. I mean, they, they've been giving it to him low, like three and a half, four. And I take it every single fucking week at this point because the guy is, with Kenny, that's who Kenny's guy is. You know, he looks to him a yeah. lot early. Um, I, I love the George Pickens. I think Kenny is gonna Kenny is gonna throw a touchdown pass, you know, to a wide receiver this week. So I, I, I'm normally betting those because, guys, this is a law of averages. You can't you can't go a whole fucking season without throwing a touchdown pass. To, you can, but I mean, it's got to be fucking terrible to have that happen. He's gonna yeah. get one, Jerry. I think I think Deontay is gonna get one this week. Uh, it I would, think he is. It would be nice to see Deontay start to form a nice rapport with Kenny based on how much he's actually juicing Kenny up, you know, through the Twitter, through the Instagram, shit like yeah, that. Exactly. Like he's, he's pulling for him. So it would be nice to see him get one for sure. And and I feel like Deontay Johnson, you know, talking shit to the fans and everything that he's done, it would be really nice to see him finally find a little bit of a rhythm. It would yeah. be nice to see him settle in, get a touchdown, you know, maybe rattle off a couple of touchdowns. If he can get hot, it's going to help our offense. If anybody, if anybody catches touchdowns that are wide receiver share, it's going to fucking help our offense. I mean, it's going to, oh, yeah. that's eventually that, that levy is going to break. Eventually we're going to score a fucking touchdown with a wide receiver at some point here from Kenny. Yeah. Hopefully this is the last week we'll be talking about a receiver, not scoring a touchdown. I hope it happens this week. It better fucking happen this week. I mean, we're more than a quarter into the year. Right. Right. And that's, and that's why, you know, you hope that the offense finds some life. So to see everything you saw out of, I see everything you saw out of Claypool and, and we're going to get, I'm assuming that we're going to get Pat back this week. I mean, Fryer yeah, is going to be back. I, it, this is Sunday in Miami can really set the tone for leading into the bye week. You know, th- this would be, you've won two of your last three, you know, if they can win this one and, and, and carry some momentum, the Eagles at some point are going to pitch a bad game. You know, who, who's to say we can't go in there and upset them. So this game on Sunday, you get this thing back to three and four and the sky suddenly isn't falling I mean, not, anymore. Not for nothing. Like, I don't mean to be like this guy, but who did the Eagles really beat? Oh, yeah. 
Agreed. You know, like who did they who did they really, really, really let's go through it right now because I'm I'm curious. Cause I don't think they played anybody that's very, very good. You know what I mean? Not saying we are very good, but Agreed. um they they really haven't beaten nobody. So we'll go through it right now. I really want to see. So this is so Eagles okay. Lions week one, 38-35. Yep. They beat the Vikings. Okay, Vikings. Okay, they beat the Vikings, which are eh, they're they're decent. Um, but then the Commanders, the Jaguars, the Cardinals, who are a mess, uh, Cooper Rush on the Cowboys, they haven't they haven't really played nobody. And they're I agree ske- with you. They, they have the weakest schedule by far. Look at these games. I mean, Steelers' defense really hasn't been great this year. Mm-hmm. Texans, Commanders mm-hmm. again, Colts, Packers, who look like dog shit, Titans, Giants, Bears, Cowboys again, Saints, Giants. They have the easiest fucking schedule. You That's know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? They will get to the postseason, and they will just fucking crumble because mm-hmm. they they are not playing teams that, that fucking are like high-powered offenses like the Bills, the, the Chiefs. And listen, the NFC no. is definitely a lot weaker, but, um, dude, they are playing nobody really the no, whole year. Agreed. And I was thinking that l- last week. I'm like, when I watched them play the play the Cowboys, I'm like, I mean, I, I looked at those same games you looked at, and I'm like, if we if we can beat the Dolphins and we can head to Philly, I, I think a lot of people are going to count the Steelers out simply looking at records and things of that nature. But yeah. that would be another Mike Tomlin thing. I mean, Jerry, if we get this fucking thing to four and four, well, that's crazy. I, I won't talk any shit about Mike Tomlin the rest of this season. You, you 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 hear it here first. I won't say another fucking negative word about it because that is great Same. coaching, man. Hey, that's great. He's earned if, it. I mean, he's fucking earned. We it. get to if we get to four and four. I mean, division that's a dream. Is, division is on. Winning mm-hmm. the division is so on. And so two this weeks will be ago, fucking huge. Two weeks ago, we looked at what what were the odds uh, of the Steelers to win the division, and it was insane. I mean, it was like plus three thousand. I think right. <laughs> yeah, plus three. Yeah, that's a and lot. That's, that's insane considering we're a half game back now. Deshaun Watson's not going to come back for a while. You know, the Ravens defense is all beat to shit. The Bengals have a Super Bowl hangover. I mean, and we beat them. You know, the Steelers are in this. I, I hate we overreacted pretty heavily last week because that was a tough fucking loss. And I don't know how you couldn't overreact, but we're right back in this thing. And if we can head on down to Miami and get this, Jerry, going yeah. to Philadelphia is going to be a lot more fun. Football is going to be a blast to talk about at least for the next month because the second half is is a is a nice easy walk in the park compared to the gauntlet that we're coming through right now. I'll tell you what I'm gonna I think I'm I think I'm gonna do it right now. I think I'm gonna bet the division right now. On the spot, Jerry. <laughs> On the spot. I mean, dude. I mean, we why not? We right into it. Talk, talk I know. Right into it. So I'm putting a nick. I'm putting a nickel on it. Five hundred to win. To win nine thousand. Is it, is it still, what's the juice right now? Plus 1,800 went down. I wish I could have took it fucking last week. I, I know, but there was no week. way we thought we would be. Yeah, the I know that's true, but there's still just, good value. Oh, there's still great. good value. 1,800 is still great money. And, and for you guys that are interested in doing the gambling, again, check out the Barstool Sportsbook app. That's where, that's where you're going you're gonna to enjoy the gambling. And, and oftentimes they'll give you your first bet for free up to, Locked I think, $500. In. Oh, 500 yeah. to win to win a th- of 9,000 locked in. <laughs> and hey, Jerry, we need a big week out of your boy on the offensive rookie of the year. We're going to have to get a big week yeah. out of Pickens too, I believe, on Sunday. Yeah, and that's why I keep hammering that over. Reese Hall is the front runner. I mean, I could still make positive money yep. out of this. I mean, I put 1,000 to win 33,000. The cash out now is at 1366. No shit. So you could take you could take 300 bucks, Jerry, and and – 300 bucks ain't bad but it's no, not gonna make not up bad. for that early season where yeah, you didn't that's... hedge that fucking broncos bet jerry oh, dude that guy russell wilson i mean i put out a tweet last night and just i mean for as much listen i'm, I'm a jesus guy mm-hmm. i'm a jesus guy for as much as this guy praises jesus jesus just might not like russell wilson <laughs> there's a chance <laughs> i mean there's a chance there i mean I mean, dude, I just, I don't under, they are in disarray They're terrible. They, and they have talent all over the field. Mm-hmm. They really, really do. And do you know what's wild about the Broncos? They gave up a lot, a lot yes. to bring Russell yes. and they yes. fucking paid him a, a bag. 
they yeah. gave them a bag. So they those fans have to be a little bit nervous based on how how not very great Russell Wilson has looked so far. I mean, they're they're just a boring football team. They're so bad to watch. So yep. bad to watch. Yep. Yep. You know what's are. not bad to watch, Jerry? is this podcast. So yep. this past week, uh, it looks as though we took number two in Pittsburgh podcast. So w- we're, we cannot thank you guys enough for listening to this. Like, comment, subscribe. We we are going to do everything we can to have the number one Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, and it's climbing rapidly, and, and it's to you guys' support. So we do thank you. It, it means the world. I know to me it means the absolute world. I love Same talking here. Steelers Same football here. with you guys. So like, comment, subscribe. All, all the comments and the likes that you do, it helps the algorithm so it shows up more i mean we we appreciate it guys and and i'm gonna do something special here the second half of the season i'm gonna buy two tickets to every game and, and we're gonna give those away on air uh the week of of the game itself so we're gonna really we're gonna really enjoy it and spread the love with you guys the second half so thank you guys for everything that that you do for for watching the show and supporting the show we appreciate it greatly we'll see you in miami this sunday yep. um it, it's gonna be a blast Tell a friend about the show if you love it. If not, keep it moving. We appreciate everything you're doing. We'll touch base with you guys here next week. All right. See you guys next week. Later, Jer. We're here. We're still here. We are still here. <laughs>